Welcome to the Cosmic's Inner Space Podcast. I'm Cami K, Inner Space Surfer and Cosmic Creatrix at KamiK.com. Are you ready to launch a business, expand your cosmic consciousness, amp your intuition, or simply celebrate the everyday messiness of being human? Then the Cosmic's Inner Space Podcast is for you. Let's dive into the show. Today, I'm excited to share my conversation with my fabulous friend and amazing coach and web designer, Katie Matson Craig. Katie believes we each connect best with the world when we allow our natural selves to emerge and strive to understand our innate strengths. In 2003, she earned a BFA in graphic design from James Madison University, inspiring her first business, Designed for Momentum. Shortly after, she went back to school for coaching and graduated from Coach University in 2006, which is when she and I met on a group coaching call and we instantly clicked. Katie was awarded an ACC certification from the International Coach Federation in 2007 and served for three years on the board of the Charlotte Area International Coach Federation chapter. With over a decade in business, she has created three signature programs and her time in business has been dedicated to helping others find momentum in their lives. Coaching is a natural fit for Katie and is an integral part of who she is. Katie works with individuals, entrepreneurs, corporations, small business owners, career shifters, and more. Part of why Katie is here is to help you unearth who you are and to guide you to communicate, act, and live from your own natural self to find your personal momentum every day. Please enjoy my conversation with Katie Matson Craig. I was going to say good morning, but um, it's morning for me and already noon for you. (laughs) It is definitely noon for me. Yeah. Halfway through my day already. (laughs) I know. I think that's the funny thing to me about time zones and differences. It's like you're in a whole different zone and part of your day than I am. You've been moving along. I'm still just, well, I don't have coffee because I didn't want to be over caffeinated. So I have tea. Good. um, And I have my water. What are you, what are you staying hydrated with today? Just water. Just water. In my lovely, my favorite mug. (laughs) In your brand. So I was thinking about some, ooh, I wish I could show you this thing, but I can't because it's a gift for someone, but I had a custom. So I don't know if you've seen any of the things on Instagram I've been posting with these uh, kind of mantra art. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're sort of like collage-ish type mantra arts. Anyway, I'm going to turn those into an Oracle deck, but I I also sampled on a coffee mug for a friend won't name her name it's a gift and she listens to the podcast (laughs) (laughs) it'll be a surprise (laughs) so cute it looks so good I'm like oh my god I might have to actually make these some merch and make these available there's so many different ways to do that now Uh uh-huh yeah I just ordered a um a trucker hat that has momentum on it and then this is my favorite coffee mug I don't know it just whatever I'm drinking I just want it in a mug like there's something about mugs that I makes know. me really happy. This one is a fave of mine. I love the, I don't know if you can see it because this handle, love I, just, it. I don't know what it is about this. My friend, Karen, shout out to Karen. She was on, oh my God, episode two or three early on, maybe yep. one. I don't even know. <laughs> Way <laughs> early. Anyway, she got this from me years ago when we worked at ASU. So oh, yeah, fun. I love the mugs. Another thing I love is, um, I don't know if you've seen this company, Mantra Mugs. Mm-mm. they'll do custom mugs for you and she does she has a couple different fonts that are really cool she has a cursive font and then she has like a big bold font and her you, her mantras are good and so you have to check writing out writing down mantra mugs. mantra mugs nice. yes i definitely think that I, there's many of those in my future <gasps> love it uh-huh yeah anyway we got kind of derailed <laughs> there <laughs> The, what are you drinking? We're good what at are you that. Drinking? We always have so much to say. We do. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. I wanted to share your genius on the podcast. And um, so I'll share with the listeners. Um, Katie and I met, I don't know, was it 05 or 06? Uh, I think it had to have been 04 or 05. Oh, yeah. I never remember when I got started. So we met in coach training at coach. Mm -hmm. U. was a virtual via phone. We couldn't even see each other. Like we, I know there was no zoom. There was no no zoom. Yeah. 
no Google Hangouts, nothing. Oh, and I think the (laughs) fascinating thing about that for me that I still remember for that experience is how connected we could still feel each other's energy. Yeah. And we had people from all over the world in some of those courses. Um, Mm -hmm. It was actually an amazing experience. And so, yeah. So part of that is they tell you to buddy up. Yep. And And I was like, I want that girl. (laughs) In the virtual dark room where we couldn't even see each other. And I loved it because we they did call on us. So like we each got an opportunity to share. And there was just something about the way that you always showed up. Um, and I, I've always said this, like you were such a wordsmith from the very beginning on how you described things. You, and it's funny, given what I know we're going to talk about today, you painted pictures for me, which mm. is ironic, right? Yes. Um, which we'll talk about. But it's, it's the space of like, I could just feel you and what you brought to the table and you had this like very effervescent personality and the vibrancy in which you talked. I was like, I, that's my buddy. Like I want to be that girl's buddy. Aww. So then I stalked you a little bit to make sure that we got paired up. <laughs> You're like, so, Hey, so, Hey, Hey, um, it's funny. Cause I don't remember exactly how that transpired, but what I do remember is the amazing balance of what you bring to the table because you have such a grounded energy, mm. which makes sense. Also in the context of when I met you, you were very actively rock climbing. Yes, I was. And so I remember being like, this chick's a badass. She climbs <laughs> big MFing rocks and <laughs> I don't do those things. And so there, there was an earthiness to your energy. So I think our yin yangs were pinging each other back in that, on those calls. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I'm so glad because it's turned into such a beautiful friendship over the years, Cami. And like, it's been so fascinating to watch how our lives and our careers and our choices have kind of paralleled each other over the years and the struggles and the challenges and then the big wins. And it just, it's been so, I don't know, it's enriched my life. Like it's been a blessing for me to know you and to be friends with you and to just be in each other's sphere all these years. Mm. I'm so glad it turned into, I mean, we've been friends for over a decade now. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, 15, almost yeah. two. Yeah. 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 Almost two decades and ditto all the same right back at you. And for those initial reasons and so many others, right. The groundedness and always like, and we've both been in both of those spaces where it's like mm-hmm. you're elevated and I'm like, I'm in a shit storm right now. And like, <laughs> you know, the teeter tottering of like being in opposite spaces as well as some parallel spaces. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then drifting and then coming back together. I love that. And then showing up at the same beach on a different coast as you at the same time, the same weekend. So weird. <gasps> just, we just grab, we just, it would have happened no matter what we just gravitate toward each other. I know. I love, I just love all the beauty of that. I also love that there's been like on a friendship rant for a second. I love that there's never been an expectation or mm-hmm. a, um, uh, I don't know. I guess you could call it codependent, but there's never been a like, oh, I didn't hear, you know, we've gone long, mm-hmm. long, long periods of yeah. time where we weren't connecting or communicating and our lives were just busy in different ways. And um, I think that's true, long lasting, mm-hmm. sustainable friendship. And that's yeah. awesome. Unconditional love. Yeah. Woo, woo. You guys can't see it, but we're <laughs> making hearts. Um, <laughs> we're making hearts on Zoom to each other. <laughs> Uh, well, everything just feels so warm and yummy right now. I'm just loving that we're starting off in this like mutual admiration <laughs> love fest. All right. Well, we'll stop so people don't get grossed out. And they're like, okay, get get to some chop chop, ladies. Get to the point, people. Get to some stuff. <laughs> um, well, maybe just share because I like to with um, – with my amazing guests like yourself who have so many different things to offer. I love to go back and give context and kind of walk us through a little bit of like where you grew up and where'd you go to school and what you study and what were you into? And it's always so fascinating because I feel like there's threads early on and yet there's corkscrews and loop-de-loops and twists and turns. So I want to hear some plot twists too. Always, always (laughs) plot twists. Um, So I grew up primarily outside of Washington, D.C. Um, my father was in the military and ended up stationed at the Pentagon in his later in his career. And so I don't know if up... I knew he was at the Pentagon. Oh, no. I, I don't know that we've ever talked about that. I don't yeah. think we ever did. See, I'm learning new stuff already. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you know, and I had a fairly, you know, normal run of the mill childhood. Um, and yet I would say, as I got into college realized, um, how very, very introverted and like sort of 
inexperienced life experience I had. And so when I went to college, it was like a total culture shock for me. And then I started exploring, you know, like, well, what, what are things that I would enjoy doing? So that's where rock climbing entered into my life. And I had Mm -hmm. a couple of extra credits at school and I was like, I don't know what classes I want to take, but I could take anything. And I was like, well, what's this climbing class? That sounds fun. So you actually started climbing in college. I did. Yep. Yep. My very last year I took a climbing class and, um, I would say that just rock climbing in general was like my first massive pivot in my life. Um, And I graduated with a degree in graphic design. So when I went to college, even I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was undeclared, had no idea. And then after my first year decided, okay, graphic design is interesting. It's something that interests me the most right now, but I always sort of deep down, like in my intuition center knew that that wasn't the thing for me, that there was more that I was meant to do, but I didn't know what that was yet. And so I was very open and just sort of let's follow what we know. Mm -hmm. Um, So backtrack a little, where did you go? And then what was it about graphic design that initially was like tugging at you? Right. So I was, um, I went to Virginia Tech my first year and uh, very, very much in that space of no idea what I want to do, but they have a huge array of opportunity. And so I'll figure it out as I go. Um, Finally kind of came out of my shell there after about six months, started to meet people, started to feel really at home. And then a neighbor of mine back home was doing graphic design. And so I would like watch them work. They, They worked out of their home. They had a studio in their home. And so I watched them work. I got you know, I picked up on a few things. I started exploring what that would look like. I liked the creativity of it a lot. There was, I always had a very creative edge to myself, but, um, and it was a way that I expressed myself, but I just didn't know graphic design was such a thing. Cause this was in 2003. I graduated in 2003. So this was like 2000, 99, 2000, Mm -hmm. um, when I was exploring it. So graphic design was like, not a huge thing back then. It was, you know, it was there. I'm dating myself a little bit, but that's okay. Um, (laughs) and so I thought, okay, well, I'll go talk to my guidance counselor at Virginia tech and see what's available for me. They had nothing. Forgive me. Is Virginia tech most, is it like a really engineering school? Is it? Yes. I don't. Okay. I wanted to make sure I had that right in my head. So so you were were in a very different part of what, of, you know, studies. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so, and also, um, school was always very difficult for me. Like I, I am a smart person, but my grades were always very mediocre. And so it was very hard for me to take tests to, um, you know, write papers. It just something about the memorization didn't sit well with me. Mm -hmm. And so I always had a hard time. And then I ended up talking to James Madison university. I talked to their admissions. I talked to them about their art program. What would that look like? I wanted to do graphic design specifically because I'm a terrible artist. My mother is an amazing artist. My brother is an amazing artist. I am not an amazing artist, but it was in their art program. So I was like, I don't know how this is going to (laughs) go. And so talk to them. Um, and he said, well, the, the gentleman I talked to said, well, you've got a couple of options. He said, you know, you can bring your portfolio in. We have an art review day. And if, of course, if we accept you, then, you know, we'll invite you to apply for the program. And I said, okay, well, there's one problem. I don't have a portfolio. I've never taken an art class in my life. And he said, well, that's going to be a problem. Um, He said, there's one other way and it's totally up to you. But um, there is a loophole right now. You can check the art box. And if nobody catches it, you'll be admitted. So this was probably the very first time in my life that I thought, well, if the universe wants me to go into graphic design and become an art major, this is how it has to happen. There's no other way aside from me taking art classes, you know, I still have the transfer somewhere, but taking art classes and getting in that way through a portfolio review. And it was the very last year that they were not requiring an art review. Mm. And so I checked the box. I submitted the application, lo and behold, get my acceptance letter off to JMU I go. So James Madison University spent my last three years there, um, had just a beautiful group of friends that came out of that art um, major and my classes. 
still was a terrible like pen to paper artist, couldn't paint, couldn't draw. Just my, I, I remember my drawing two teacher coming up behind me when we were doing a portrait one time and he said, dear, what is your major again? <laughs> <laughs> what are you how did you get in <laughs> who stuck you in yeah and and I said graphic design and he said that's computers right and I said yeah and he goes okay <laughs> he let me be ouch <laughs> I mean it was bad I, I, he was warranted it was bad yeah um still can't draw so mm-hmm. anyway get through four years of art school um emphasis in graphic design totally loved my graphic design classes but I really excelled being able to be artistic do these projects express myself in that way. We didn't have exams. We didn't have quizzes. It wasn't like that, you know? And so that, that style of learning really, really worked with my mind and the way that I learn. And I had a blast. I loved it. And so when I graduated, so that pair this with my rock climbing, both of those experiences helped me express myself so much from this very introverted, can't speak, can't talk, literally almost don't have a voice. People couldn't hear me when I spoke. Mm. Uh, to this person who, you know, fast forward five or 10 years has, has started a business and I'll get there in just a second, but like, and then it has a public voice. It was a very, very transformative five to 10 years. And it all started with those two choices that I made. Um, When I got out of school, I started with a very small graphic design firm. And Uh, At that time, this is about when you and I met, um, I knew I was not interested in staying in graphic design long term necessarily. Um, I was in that space, and I'm sure a lot of your listeners can relate to this. I was in a career in a team that I loved, but the work Mm -hmm. was like sucking my soul. And And what about the work after a while? What about the work was draining you? Yeah. So one, it was very monotonous. Like we were doing healthcare marketing. So there were Mm -hmm. very specific colors, very specific fonts. It was very, it got to a point where it was very templated. There wasn't a whole Mm -hmm. lot of creative capability in the work that we were doing. It was also fairly fast paced. Um, And my, just the way that my brain works, and I've always said this about myself as a graphic designer. um, I, I don't see a vision for what I want to create and then create it. I have to take the title that you want, the content that you want, the photos that you want and put them on the page and move them until they work for me visually. Mm -hmm. And I'll create something amazing, but it has always felt like a backwards way of doing things to me. And so So my vision- So it's more like a puzzle than a painting. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so my vision and the way that I visualize has always been very, very different. And so to do it that way felt like work all the time. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't this like amazing creative expression that I feel like so many artists have when they create, it was like pushing and pulling and, and maneuvering until I got it where I wanted it. And it was always very exciting, the end result when I got it there, but it took a while. Mm -hmm. And so I started exploring what else could there be for me? And I started exploring the different avenues of healing arts, So things like massage and acupuncture and naturopathy, things that I enjoyed participating in, I had a passion for, I really believed in. And as I explored those different healing arts, I realized, you know what? I really like getting massages. I like going to an acupuncturist. I totally respect and love my my, um, naturopathic doctor, but I don't want to be those things. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the person delivering that information. Was there any one modality that like pulled you into that more? Like, did someone, uh, were you searching for something? Did you accidentally stumble onto something? Did you just have an intuitive hit? Like, oh, I'm going to go to this acupuncturist. And like, then that opened the door was, do you remember the kind of inception into some of those, some of that world? Such a good question. It, um, I would say at that point in my life, it was a mixture of intuition And also for a long time, my mom is very intuitive. And she, when I was very young, used to tell me about visions that my grandmother would have. Um, And she and I would have interesting things happen that were very synchronistic with thoughts that we would have or experiences that we would have. And she really encouraged that side of me. And Mm -hmm. so even when I was little, I had books on 
your astrological signs and I had books on different like Celtic signs and things like I just I was fascinated in all of that and she encouraged that within me so that's something I had always had is a part of me Mm -hmm. so when I was experiencing and I'd never been it's funny because I was doing healthcare marketing right but I was never super into traditional healthcare like we didn't go to the doctor my mom was a very stubborn woman as well and so unless we were like bleeding from the head, we really didn't go to a doctor. Right. <laughs> it was sort of suck it up and you'll be fine. Um, so I learned very early on, my body had the ability to heal itself. And so at that point in time, I think just a mixture of both her guidance and then also my intuitive hit drove me into more of the healing arts and caring for myself in that way versus traditional medicine and prescriptions and medication. And, um, but I found that while I enjoyed those things, while I really believed in them, that worked well for me, but it wasn't what I wanted to do Mm -hmm. long term. And so at that point, I started wondering, well, what else is out there? And I created actually a process that I used in my career coaching for many years that starts to pull and tug at those threads and starts to see kind of what's the golden thread that, that runs through everything in terms of interests. And then I started opening those doors. And so for me, that golden thread was healing arts. It was bringing more peace and less stress to people's lives. Cause I felt like with graphic design, we were constantly going through revisions. We were pushing things. Mm. We were pulling things. We were talking to printers. We were negotiating, we, you know, like all of these things were happening and it was fast paced. And I felt stressed. My clients felt stressed until the project was done. And then we'd start it all over again. You know, mm-hmm. it was a brand new process. Yeah. And so in doing that um, and exploring that, I was like, I want to do something that brings more peace to people's lives and less stress. And within probably a month or two of that and identifying this healing arts, you know, is is there something I can do to create change in that space and to bring my unique skill set into that space? I found um, that my boss had decided he wanted us to have continuing education. And so he started to bring experts in that we could go to workshops and things like that. So he said, well, I've signed you up for this workshop. It's with a coach who specializes in graphic design. And I thought, okay, sure. (laughs) And when I was on this workshop, I was so much more interested in how she got to deliver the information that she was delivering, way more interested in that than how it applied to my job and what I could do with it. (laughs) Right. So I started exploring coaching. So this is what happens when we start to pull at these threads in our life, right? Like, Mm -hmm. oh, that's interesting. I'm going to follow that. You know, it's a little breadcrumb trail. I'm going to follow that and see what doors it opens. So then I started exploring coaching and realizing this because I had thought about therapy as well, but I didn't really want to go into people's pasts and the trauma, like that side of it didn't really. Yeah. And so I started to explore coaching. I hired a coach. My coach encouraged me to go to coach you. You and I met there. Um, And then before I knew it, like literally, and I'm not even exaggerating this, before I knew it. I had a business plan written up and I'm handing in my notice with my boss. And I couldn't even believe I was thinking about starting a business because that was not the initial intention. The initial intention was I want to learn these skills to better myself and maybe like my job a little more, you know, maybe figure out what I want to do next, but it was not to start a coaching business. I remember, I remember those days. Like, (laughs) yes. I do. I remember mm-hmm. you're like, you were so freaked out. Like, I, I, uh, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. But, I, but how, what? And we, yeah, I remember. And you just step into it. Yeah. And I do want to follow sidebar, the next step. I do want to sidebar say how transformational that program was also. So yeah. I think sometimes, you know, people think, oh, I've read a couple of books and I've done the, and, and I'm, I put out sometimes like do the fucking work, you know, hashtag mm-hmm. do the fucking work. 
we did such deep, intense work in that program because basically yeah. we go through what we would put a client through. You know, you learn all, you don't only learn the skills of a coach, you go through the process of being coached basically by every instructor in the program and buddies. I mm-hmm. just remember I had you as my buddy in that program and I had my friend Call as my buddy in Coach Mary's program, which I was in for a year. I don't even know if it overlapped or after coach you like my timelines are all shifty yeah but, like, at this point sobbing and ugly crying on the phone to each other and be like ah, because it just pulls up all that like unconscious yeah. ickiness and shadow work and you know all these terms that people f- fling around like it's just you know oh we'll just do some shadow work and I'm like do you know what shadow work really is <laughs> <laughs> do you know that it's a lifelong process it's just not like a band-aid you put on something it's all good I, I did some shadow work today and it's all good it's like mm, mm. it gets real ugly before yeah. it, before it gets you know yes, it and shined and polished and you know extract it, extracted from us, yes. from our soul. So yeah, I just, um, I just, again, back to our friendship and, and being so grateful for you holding that space for me in that time period, because I, that, that was a huge dark night of the soul for me. Like that time mm. period I was processing and going through so much. And, and I remember, so at that point I was working at Lindenwood and I was in a full-time role, but then I transitioned into a teaching role during those years yeah. and was building my coaching business, Passion Meets Purpose at the time. And I remember that the, the um, because there's a, pr- a, every it's different for everyone, right? But it's like, there's kind of that point where you let have let go of this trapeze and mm. you haven't grabbed the other one yet. And you're just like in free fall. Yeah. And I remember literally being like, I'm either losing my mind or this is up leveling. And, and mm. now that I've been through it multiple times and I'm going through it again, right. You're like, Oh, okay. This is an up level. <laughs> That's what this is. Okay. And you actually are losing, you're losing your old self. You're losing your old mind, your old beliefs, your old way of being. Yeah. And there's also a bit of a mourning process in that. So sure is. I think sometimes you and I both right on the face are very positive. People were very, um, you know, bright. And so sometimes people I think can confuse that. I know for myself, especially um, terms like toxic positivity, sometimes I think Mm. people throw around, not necessarily at me, but I know that's like a movement. And I just wanted to kind of sit there for a moment and, and share that we have both, you know, gone through the darkest, darkest mucky muck of all of our stuff and sorting through it. And it's, it's an iteration process. It's not, we're never cooked. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and and, no. and the more you think you have oh I tackled that dragon and then it's like <sighs> then a year two years five years later it shows back up and you're like what the f are you doing here I thought we dealt yes. with this way back then and it's like I'm back girl what's up mm-hmm. yeah yeah so, I had a I had a teacher one time um I think I was in a workshop and I she explained this the best that I've ever heard anybody in like the simplest terms she said Listen to yourself the next time you ask the question, why? Because essentially what's happening is every time you say, I don't understand why this happened. Mm. Why did this happen this way? Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening again? The universe is saying, oh, I'm sorry. You didn't understand. Let me give it to you again. Right. <laughs> and I was like, you oh, needed clarification. <laughs> Done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I was yes, like, yes. oh snap, here uh-huh. it is. <laughs> um, because you're right. I mean, we had to, in order to ever step forward as a coach and lead other people, you have to go through your own stuff. Mm-hmm. And I remember one of our instructors, even back then saying some days you're two steps ahead of your clients mm-hmm. and that's it. Mm-hmm. And some days you're three years ahead of them. Totally depends, but we're all human. And that's one of the imposter syndromes that I think coaches go through too, is, you know, well, who am I to teach these things? Because I'm just going through it, or I've just dealt with it, or I'm still going through it, or it's coming back up. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I just launched something big and new in my business. And who the imposter syndrome came up big for me. I was ready to like shut the whole business down and walk away from it. That, <laughs> that felt so much easier mm-hmm. than putting this thing out into the world. And the thing isn't that big. It's like an extension of what I've already been doing, but it was so scary. And I had to sit in that space. I had to listen to the inner dialogue. I had to 
meet my inner critic face to face so many days, so many days and sit with it until I could slowly break it up and get it to start dissolving. Mm -hmm. And it's in those moments that I always for myself and I always tell my clients, pay attention to what you're experiencing, because if you're going to teach this, you have to know what this feels like. You have to go through it yourself so that you can then remember when your clients are in that space and you can then teach them how to step through it. But, yes. Oh, it's uncomfortable. I know. And, and that's one thing to, to, I guess, also share. Cause I, you know, part of my intention with this podcast is that it's a portal in and of itself to expose people to mm-hmm. different modalities and different things. And so, um, I'll save the conversation between the difference between counseling and coaching. And we both experienced it because I started a counseling Mm. program and I, it was the class that I took on multiple personalities. And I was like, I'm out. (laughs) It was so intense. And the things that this amazing instructor had dealt with, he had been a community college therapist for the majority of his career. And in a community Mm. college, if you take one credit, you get access to that, which is an amazing resource. And just the, the, the stuff that he shared with us, I was just like, I don't have the capacity for this. And, um, um, amazed and astounded that there are these wonderful people that that are in that world I knew kind of like you for me it was more going forward um yeah uh (laughs) anyway yeah and that's where the positivity comes in right it's like you as coaches if you if you choose to enter into a coaching profession you want to move forward with your clients and and just to clarify what you're saying there it's not about moving backwards into their trauma or into what has kept them stuck. Therapists do an amazing job with that. It's about moving forward. And so how many times have you said to yourself, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know how I'm supposed to be thinking. I know how I'm supposed to be handling this scenario, but it's hard to step into it sometimes. And so as coaches, you know, yes. And I under totally understand what you're saying about this, like toxic positivity movement and all of these things there there is that space. And yet, when Mm -hmm. you've studied the mindset, when you've studied what happens in our brain chemistry, to actually turn positivity into reality, it's a weird balance to strike. Because it's not always a fake it till you make it. But sometimes it starts there, like sometimes. Yes. And so, yeah, it, there is, uh, there's a lot to unpack there. We it's like, yeah, that's a whole that. different scene. Yeah. That's, that's like yeah. living from the wish fulfilled and Florence yeah. Kovalshin and all of the attraction stuff. And yeah, we won't go down that train. The other thought that I had, and I had kind of spaced for a second and forgot it was, you know, there, there are sometimes questions people will say, do you need to hire a coach who has a certification or a coach who doesn't have a certification? My thoughts on that are, so I went through the whole entire 75 hours of training from coach U, but mm-hmm. I didn't actually get the official piece of paper because I didn't capture those hours and then do the things that you have to do to mm-hmm. like actually get the document. Right. Um, so, I mean, I guess technically it's not official, but I went through all of the training, Right there are lots of people out there calling themselves coaches who don't have any training. And I I just want to encourage people to use their discernment, right? Like make sure you check out people's testimonials. If you need to talk to someone that they've worked with, not everything on a marketing or a sales page is honest and true. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I would just make sure to vet the person that you're considering working with. And I don't necessarily think people have to have gone through coach training. Like there's, especially in like business coaching, like if you ran a multi-million dollar business, like clearly you've got the skill set. you know, if you were successful yeah. in what you did in, in whatever your role was from that perspective, but there are foundational fundamental pieces that I think sometimes who, people who have not gone through some sort of training or done the work themselves. And it's, you know, mm-hmm it's clear whether someone has or hasn't. So I think there's a bit of intuition at play and also doing your due diligence in vetting people that you want to pay money to because um, not everyone has pure intentions. Right. Well, listen to your intuition. Don't take the first person that you come across. Like I always tell people, you know, they're like, no offense, but I am going to talk to some other coaches. I'm like, great, please. Yeah. Yeah. Please talk to other coaches. Like I want you to pick a person who feels the most aligned for you. And if that's me, wonderful. And if it's somebody else, great. And there's different coaches for for different periods of your life and different coaches for different things. You know, I'm so fortunate that I have like a whole 
circle of people who do different parts of coaching. And I'm like, I need to book two hours. Let's do this. You know, like when I have done that multiple times here and there and throughout for different reasons and ways. And, um, so yeah, just, there's not a one size fits all and just, just be clear on, you know, what you're trying to, what your outcome is that you're trying to achieve in working with or taking someone's program or taking a course, even, even taking some of the, you know, lower price pointed courses or digital Mm -hmm. downloads, free downloads. There's a lot of value and a lot of free downloads. So kind of, you know, testing the waters a bit with the people. I guess that's all I wanted to say in regards. Yeah, well, definitely. And I think too, that's anything in life, right? Like Mm -hmm. we, I I will tell you. And so uh, just very quick background. I run two businesses, right? I run Design for Momentum, which is a small print and web design firm. And I also run Momentum Coaching, where I do coaching for my clients. Right now, I'm focused on business clients. That's all I'm taking at the moment. But I did used to do career and life coaching for many, many years. The number one thing that I hear from my career coaching clients was always, I don't know what I want to do because I always just took the next thing that came along. Mm, Right. So when we talk about creating a vision for your life, when we talk about understanding what your vision is, sometimes, always, not even sometimes, let me take that back, always take some time Mm -hmm. every day for a little while to write out, what do I want for my life? It's the number one thing we don't think about. And it's the number one thing we have control over. Yeah. Well, and so to do a, a middle of the podcast plug, that's why I'm creating Inner Space mm-hmm. Camp, which is going to launch in June. Um, so four weeks from now, which is insane to think that that's, com- that's happening. I'm stepping into it. So exciting. And I know so this exciting. is just the first iteration of it, but it's finally, I was finally like, I've got to harness these things because between the career coaching that I did for many years and the life coaching and some of the business and personal branding coaching and the entrepreneurial thing, like I feel like I have this really weird mix of those things. And it really is what you were saying. It's like those, in, I'm, I call them inner space best practices. If you, mm-hmm. if you aren't aligned from there, then, then you're not going to be clear on the career path or what kind of business do you want to launch? Or even if you are a business owner, like I have a client right now, she's got an amazing business and it's already, you know, got legs and it's, it's doing well, but she's at that other point where different shiny objects are showing up for her. And she's like, <laughs> what about this path? And I was like, I need you to walk me back like three steps and help me understand. And so I started asking questions because she originally hired me to help her with like speaking and polishing story and storytelling and like getting this whole uh, other revenue stream going for her business. And I was like, what is the thing you really, really want to be doing? And she was like this. And it was totally not related to speaking and doing all this stuff. And I was like, then why are you going to go down that rabbit hole when you need to first open up more time and spaciousness to do the number one thing you said you wanted to do that could come later. And that's definitely something that would be a great add on and it makes Mm -hmm. sense and it fits for you and it fits for your business, but let's go back. (laughs) And so she was like, Oh my God. Huge. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) I just like hit the pause button. I was like, "Mm, let's have a little time out here. Let's go back. And so I was like, Oh my God, this work is so critical. And it starts with yourself as an individual, as an individual contributor at your job, as an individual who might own a business, as a partner in a relationship, as a parent, right? Like if you're not aligned here and clear on vision, intention, you know, core values, like most people don't even know what their core values are. And I'm like, how are you building? Then you're living by default. Like, and we all have a default and my default I st- that's the thing that, you know, the default is there if I backslide. And I'm like, oh, yeah. that's why I have these practices in place because, you know, one of mine was um, you know, buying stuff I didn't need and putting it on a credit card and then having credit card debt or then returning mm-hmm. it the next weekend because I don't need this bag of stuff I just bought because mm-hmm. I was in an unconscious moment and felt triggered. And I was like, <gasps> let's go shop, you know, this so, makes me feel better yeah, right. for a second. Yeah. And then I was like looking at my statements going, <laughs> what? Uh, yeah. I could use that money yeah. for something else. So mm-hmm. we all have the default modes. And if we don't have those things in alignment, then, then you're just building a house of cards, essentially, whether yeah. it's a business or a relationship or a career, you know? Yeah. So yeah. 
I feel like that's a perfect segue to get a little bit more into the vision and the designing your life and maybe talk a little bit about how you have these two businesses and how the overlap of the design and the vision, because you're doing, you know, with your design clients, there's the visual piece. Right. We, we talked about the thing that we're going to, that we're, we're going to share about the way you see things because I didn't know this about you and you didn't know this about you for how long. So until, let's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's just get into that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, um, this is something that I recognized about myself recently, a friend brought it to my attention. So I said a little bit ago, like there has always been this gap in my brain that I felt like I didn't fit into your traditional art major. I didn't fit into your traditional graphic designer. I didn't fit into your traditional student role because I couldn't take quizzes or tests. I wasn't, I didn't have the memory capacity. I understood those things. I knew those things, but it wasn't something I could pull up like a vision in my brain. I couldn't see the page. I could you know, I didn't have any kind of photographic memory period. And so I had that piece then with graphic design, I had to like move things around. I would talk to my, my uh, fellow students and I would say, you know, well, tell me your process. And they'd be like, oh, I have this amazing vision for what I want it to be. I think about all the things, I do some research and then I create it from what I see in my brain. And I was like, weird, I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, so I, I ended up um, when I left my graphic design job and started my coaching business, I ended up freelancing with graphic design and started my own business as a graphic designer and simultaneously started the coaching business. And then what ended up happening after like two to three years is those two kind of merged together. Mm -hmm. So I focused on holistic businesses because I was like, at least if I can help small businesses to have a bigger reach, to grow bigger, to um, understand their marketing, to understand some of the simple tools that they can do to have a bigger reach, then that's going to be amazing because I can help your acupuncturist, your massage therapist, your naturopathist. Oh my gosh, I keep saying that. Your (laughs) naturopathic doctors to expand their reach, to reach more people with the information that they have because there's so much unknown about it. So many people don't know that that's an option for them versus Mm -hmm. traditional medicine. So I was like, great. This is a place I can actually create a, a difference in, and I don't have to do the thing, right? Right. Like I can help them grow their thing. Yeah. So that was really exciting for me. And then the business coaching came into play really several years later, once I did feel to your point earlier about, you know, hiring a business coach and, you know, what kind of experience do your coaches have? Once I felt like I had the experience to actually teach that came about many, many years later where I could say, okay, now I feel like I can teach these small businesses some things about business and marketing. It was the same things I would teach my design clients, right? So those two began to intersect clients would either hire me for business coaching and then hire us, my, my team for their marketing or they would hire us for marketing and realize, okay, I need to go a bit deeper into my branding and hire me for business coaching. So those two things began to feed each other. Um, what I discovered about myself is that there is this term called aphantasia. And aphantasia is the lack of ability to see with your mind's eye. And so essentially when you sit down to meditate or when my fellow students would sit down to visualize what they wanted to create. You can, if you're in a guided meditation and somebody tells you to visualize a purple cow, you can visualize a purple cow. You'll put it in its field. You'll see it through the fence. Maybe you walk up to it. I can see it right now. Pet it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I see nothing. Mm -hmm. I see nothing. Fascinating. Um, Theoretically, because I have seen pictures of purple cows online, I can see those pictures in my mind. Mm -hmm. And some people can't even do that. So I'm a little bit of a hybrid Mm. when it comes to this term. I can see things that I can conceptualize because I've seen evidence of them somewhere. Mm -hmm. Some people can't see anything at all. Mm -hmm. And this can be something that you're born with. It affects a very small amount of the population, actually. And people have varying degrees of it. So some people that are listening may actually have varying degrees. But most people, it's a very, very, very tiny percentage of the population that has zero mind's eye. And so as I started researching this more, because I was like, that's strange, because that makes so much sense. 
with how I have gone about my whole life and configuring right. what I wanted out of my life and understanding it and how I work with my coaching programs and how I've created designs all these years, you know, without being able to visualize. Isn't that crazy? Like, no wonder I always felt like I was pushing mm -hmm. instead of creating. Mm -hmm. And so as I have researched this, as I have looked into it more and more, I realized some people are born with this and some people have it because of a brain injury or a trauma of some sort. So mine, I would, I would say I was most likely born with it. I mean, maybe I had a trauma or something early, early on. I have no idea. I don't think I had anything major like that, but I guess it's possible. But as far as I can remember, this has been a thing for me. Mm -hmm. And so I started looking at it though, from a different lens of how has this actually helped me? in my business when it came to creating the life that I wanted and creating the business that I wanted. And I realized for me, it's actually become a bit of a superpower because when my clients come to me, and a lot of times this happens with entrepreneurs, we are entrepreneurs because we have a million ideas and <laughs> we love our ideas. We love a good idea. So Ideation is one of my strengths. So I hear you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So just like you were saying with your client who was like, oh, all these shiny, shiny opportunities, right? That's what we do. And it's not just entrepreneurs. I just tend to work with entrepreneurs most often. But when we have all of those little shiny ideas, ooh, 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 you know, maybe I could do this, maybe I could do that, or maybe I could take what I'm doing and do this, this, and this with it. Um, we distract ourselves at the end of the day. And what happens is we spread our energy so thin <clears throat> that we can't actually access all of those different ideas that we have and follow through with them because our energy becomes spread so thin. Mm -hmm. So what I tend to do with my clients is I go, okay, let's take it, take all of that. We're going to write it down. So everything with me, I al have always said I'm a very visual person, but I don't mean up in my head. I have to see things. I have to put them on paper. I right. have to put them on my computer. It, I have to have that puzzle. Give me all the puzzle pieces and mm -hmm. I'm going to make sense of it for you. Yeah. And so when I work with my clients, a lot of times what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, give me all the puzzle pieces. I'm writing them all out and then I'm prioritizing them and I'm helping them to take all of those pieces and put them into alignment and saying, okay, here's where we're going to start. And now you have a focus. Now go do that thing. Then we're going to go to the next one. Mm -hmm. Then the next one, all of these other ideas are still here for you. They're safe. They're waiting, but your focus and your energy needs to be in one place or else you're doing yourself a disservice because you're putting your energy in 14 places when right. really there's one thing you want right now. Yes. So it's fascinating from so many perspectives. Um, one, when you say, write it down, do you mean a list? Is it like, is it like bulleted list for you? How does that look for you? Because I'll, well, I'll share how it looks for me after you tell me how it looks for you. So when you say, write it down, what does that look like? Okay. So I love a good list. Uh -huh. That's like my most favorite thing in the world. Are you a, a hand writer on paper? Are you a Google doc person? Where are you putting this down? Yeah. So I used to be a handwriting person and then I found I had 18 journals and they were all <laughs> over the place and I didn't know where any of my lists were and it right. drove me crazy. So yeah. now I use softwares like Asana, things uh -huh. like that, that I can actually put things into and create lists. But I did just find, and I'll share this with you as a resource that maybe you know about, maybe you don't, maybe your, your readers know about. I actually have it sitting right here. Let me see if I can find a blank page because nobody needs to see the chicken scratch. <laughs> here. here we go. Um, have you ever heard of Rocket Book? No. Best tool ever. Um, shameless plug for this company. I have no affiliation <laughs> with them. I just find them amazing. Uh -huh. So Rocketbook comes in different sizes. They have like your tiny spiral notebook. They've got this one, which I love because it's like a five by seven. Mm -hmm. And then they have eight half by 11 and larger. And they have note cards as well. So it's great for school. Um, it's basically a dry erase board. So <sighs> you write in it whatever you want to take your notes on. And then down here, you can probably not really see it. QR code. Like, yeah. Well, yes. And there's these teeny tiny, um, doesn't matter. There's these teeny tiny little icons. You can assign these icons to different places. So I can scan this in on my phone on their app and send it to Dropbox in a folder. Oh, I can send it to Asana. I can send it to Google drive. It, I can send it wherever I want it to go. It's then, rocket, rocket books. I just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rocket book. Mm -hmm. Yep. So then I just wipe it clean with a, 
a wet rag mm. done and reuse the page. I love it. So yeah, now my awesome. lists go in here mm-hmm. and then I can erase them once I've done them or they're safe. I can also erase the pen. So like the pen itself has an eraser on it. So mm-hmm. if I do something, I can erase it and put something new in. I just, I love it. So it gives me that pen to paper feel, which is like near and dear to my heart, mm-hmm. but I don't have 18 million yes. journals. I just I have, have one. I have, yeah, I have lots of journals. Yeah. Um, so a couple <laughs> things. One, why that is so interesting is because, and I don't think we, I don't think he and I talked about it when I had my friend, Jerry, who's a hypnotherapist and I've have had some incredible hypnotherapy sessions with him. Mm, That's a technique that he uses is the whiteboard. So you, Mm. you write, you visualize writing the thing on the whiteboard and then you, you see yourself like making it go away and it's like dissolved, gone. It's in the ethers that you see the little dust kind of just float away. So you see the the dust float away. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I see the dust float away. Visualize the dust floating away. Um, So it's kind of magic in that way because it's a subconscious mind hack. And Mm. then for me with that stuff, I do lists and mind mapping. Like Mm, I love mind mapping. You know, like, because I need to see the bubbles for me. That's how I in my mind's eye because I do see in my mind's eye, like have clairvoyant stuff vision but also I think that's where the strategic piece for me comes in really hot too is because I can see connections and it it is like that like it's like a dashboard just pops up and there's like ding, yeah ding, ding, ding. the central thing is in the middle so cool. and then I see all these little things and I'm like but I didn't think other I didn't even think to think other people don't see like that like I mm-hmm. I think even in business and at work like I'm like, how it's so natural to you and people can't see that. Yeah. I'm like, how do you not see those things are connected? And like, if you just like pulled them together, they would like flow so much better. And so I'm not, I'm more of a big picture person. I know some people are really gifted at pulling the legs down on it then and bringing that, which is why I love having those partners and people in my life as well, that I can say, here's my big vision, here's all my buckets. And then they're able to help me break those buckets, pull the legs down and then put the action lists together. Like first this, 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 and then you like a process doc or something like that. Cause that Mm -hmm. makes me want to poke my eyes out. Spreadsheets and process docs. I'm like, (laughs) no, I know they're important because you can't achieve all these things if you don't have the process docs and the spreadsheets. Right. But that's not my gift. <laughs> yeah. So back to the vision piece, it's just fascinating. And to think that I am now this far along in my own career, my own life and coaching clients. And now you have gifted me with like, uh, remember not everyone, when we say vision sees it that mm. same way. And of course they don't, but you know, I think just when you're saying, when you, when you think visualize, like you said, with meditation and the purple cow, like it's always, yeah, go into a, you know, visualize yourself in a garden and see a deer right. and sit on the bench and you know, you're an animal will come along. What is the animal? And you're like, I don't know. Cause I don't see an animal. So I'm like, I don't know. It's nighttime in my vision. <laughs> it's just dark. <laughs> it's dark in here. So, so that's so fascinating. And, um, I feel like the gift of us having this conversation last week or two weeks ago or whenever we kind of hit on this point of like, hey, we should discuss this is that now I have that in my awareness and I get to be a better coach because I now have an understanding that when we we talk about visualization, which is a huge piece of it, um, that everyone sees it differently and then needs to process it differently, which I did, you know, I was aware of that piece. It was the visual piece that I, because it is so picture show in my head it's like a movie screen pops up and I'm like oh there's everybody there's all the casting characters and all the things and you're like yeah no yeah not at all Which, no. but I love that like I've always been so in awe of people who could do that and that have that capability and you over the years have shared with me so many different visions that you've had and I'm like that's amazing I don't do that at all like mm-hmm. I I can I, I, again, I can conceptualize something based on something I've seen before. So for me, and I think all of our brains work this way to a certain extent as well. So while you can see it, and while most people can visualize, the problem happens when we get to action. And we, you and I just have had many conversations over the years of my pet peeve with like, 
think it and it will appear, Mm. you know, like this whole law of attraction thing, which I love. I do. I love the law of attraction. I believe that that is a part of the equation, but I also believe in action. That's why I made my business momentum. It's why I talk about creating daily momentum. It is Mm -hmm. like, that is where things actually happen is when you take your intention and you pair it with action. So the whole thing about being able to visualize it is wonderful, but where people get stuck or where they end up on a treadmill is they don't take the daily action to back it up, Mm -hmm. to make that vision come to fruition, to break down the steps into a place where they can tangibly move forward and see it happening. And adding on to that, it's, it's breaking down, which when you're saying the lists and you pull the pieces in that way. So you're sort of like collating it or, yeah. or pulling it into the order to the fake it till you make it kind of thing. Cause I know there's, you know, debates on both sides of that or acting from the wish fulfilled. You have to take those action steps once you've figured out what those action steps are. Right. So one, it's figuring out what those action steps are to some sort of order of Mm -hmm. comes first right and then stepping into the feeling space of and this is the I mean I haven't even touched on this in the in this Mm -hmm. podcast yet I haven't had an episode yet um the quantum field and that whole conversation because for me now where I am I can connect to multi like again, visual, (laughs) if Uh there were a fan of cami heads (laughs) Uh that all look slightly different than the one you're looking at right now, they're all right here too. And I have access to those versions of me who have gone on potential reality threads and done the things that I think I want to do. So the cool part about that, which we won't go down the quantum rabbit hole too hardcore because it can get like, where are we? What's happening? Okay, but I want to sometimes. Yeah. So... (laughs) There are infinite numbers of me's running off in different dimensions doing th- any idea that, that we have of like, hmm, this one, right? Huh, might be cool to do a podcast. It's brewing, it's brewing, it's brewing. There's versions of me that went off and did it faster than I did. And I have access to those versions of me and can say, I need a download. What are those mm-hmm. next steps? And that's, again, tied into intuition. When we think it's an intuition, it's just, oh, it just poof, popped in. No, it popped in because there's another version of you who's done the thing. And if you connect to it and ask it for guidance, it will give it to you. I know that sounds mm-hmm. like far out, <laughs> but- that we- well, can I say for anybody who feels like that's far out, it doesn't matter what you believe and how it comes to you. The, the fact of the matter is we've all experienced intuition in our own ways. So whether you, whether that's too far out for right. somebody's brain who's listening or not, mm-hmm. the fact is, if you ask for the guidance, if you ask for right. the understanding of how it's going to happen, you will get the answer if you're open enough to it. Yes. No matter how it comes. And that back to the whole earlier part of our conversation of doing the work, clearing out your shit, doing shadow work, because you can't hear it Mm -hmm. if there's all this other shit in the way. And that includes junk food TV, junk food music, all all the crappy ish for your soul, Mm -hmm. getting hung up in drama with friends and family and all that stuff is all noise and distraction Mm -hmm. and that isn't going to get you to this fantasy ish life that you may somewhat think you want or projects you want to step into, or you want to move to another country. Like all those things you got to work on getting all that ick out, get grounded. Then you can tune in and ask for the guidance, wherever you believe that guidance is coming from, right? Because I I feel like there's also the universe, God, source, creator, whatever you want to call it, there's that connection too. There's ancestral connections. Um, But again, that those things all essentially are in the quantum field as well. You know, we don't just, this is a 3D thing that we're in here, but there is so much going on behind the scenes of what we can see energetically that we're connected to 24 seven. We just were never taught that. Right. Well, I think the I think some of the common beliefs around that for people who feel like they're blocked in some way are other people can have that, but mm, I can't. Yes. Um, they're gifted in that way, but I'm not. Right. Um, it's the timing is off. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of layers there. I also think that in some ways 
that can be true. However, yes. where we need to understand things is that this is an innate tool that is available yes. to anyone. And if we could have one, and it doesn't take special education, it doesn't take special work, it doesn't take any of that other than an openness and the ability to get quiet and listen. Right. And we it, all have access to that. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so when we can get quiet and listen, and to some people, and again, with the different ways that we all learn, whether it is meditation, whether it is journaling, some I'm a verbal processor. I need to talk things out with somebody to hear it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so audio. Um, and I need to hear it, whether it's myself saying it or somebody reflecting it back to me in order to get the clarity on how I want to move forward. And then I have to write it down so that I can see it. Mm -hmm. So I have to have that two part process. So learning what way you need to receive the messages in order to move forward to figure out your process for then knowing the action to implement is key. Yes. So sometimes it's a combination. Sometimes it's one thing. And I know you teach people all about receiving messages and the different ways we can do that, which I think is so, so important in terms of a message. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that, then you can begin to ask the right questions, mm -hmm. which are all about what is it that you really want? And you don't have to have the big picture. This is, this is another thing that always came up in career coaching for me with my clients. You don't have to have the big picture of what the company is, what the role is, that none of that actually matters. What right. matters is what are your passions and what are your skills mm -hmm. and what kind of environment do you want to be in? Yes. The environment Get is clear on those also. three things yeah. and you can go forward and start to open doors yes. so that the right thing shows up for you. Yeah. I've shared examples about that kind of scenario mm -hmm. when, um, when I was career coaching MBA students at ASU, you know, one came into me one day and was like, oh my God. I'm lit up about consulting. And I was like, cool. What do you know about consulting? Well, they make a lot of money. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, they do. And do you know what, what is required of consultants that typically they hop on a plane on a Sunday and fly to their client's location and they're there till Thursday or Friday. And then they get to go home, recharge, do their laundry, and then hop on a plane again on Sunday. You just said that you recently got married and you guys were trying to have a baby. Right. And he, and he was like, yeah. And I was like, do you, do you not want to be home for that? You know, do you want to be a road warrior? Because that's what that entails typically. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Oh, so, you know, really understanding lifestyle. What do you want your life to look like? And that's where the overlap is between the life and the career coaching piece where it's like, you know, career coaching is one thing, but if you don't factor in someone's whole life and their values and what they want to create, yeah. um, not to mention how they want to dress, right? Like some people, oh, I want it. it's like, you're going to be really like professionally dressed there and you like to dress casual and wear flip-flops. So that might not be a fit for mm -hmm. you, you know? So just, yeah, those, those environmental pieces too. I don't think people think too much about one resource. Also, I wanted to share, um, I know we use it a little bit is the Marco Polo app. Mm -hmm. And why I love that as a coaching tool too, I, it finally came to me like after a year when I moved from Phoenix and came up here to Prescott, a friend of mine and I, like every day when we were in our cars on our commutes would Marco Polo each other back and forth. And that was our way of like catching up with each other. And here's what's going on. And I'm on my way here. And I did this and this and this and this, but also, you know, you rant a little bit or you share. <laughs> and then I, sometimes I, I started watching the video back and I was mm -hmm. like hearing myself talk to myself. So mm -hmm. you're on the screen looking at yourself, but you're leaving a message for your friend, but really you're having a conversation with yourself. And so that's yeah. kind of a really beautiful thing is to be able to go, Oh, <laughs> I hear what I just said there again, mm -hmm. you know, right. almost like a live yeah. journal kind of thing where you would look back through a journal and go, wow, look how many years I've been talking about this thread. You know, this mm. thing is consistently popping up over the years. And the video is very similar in that, that you get to see like, Oh, wasn't I just on a tangent about this two months ago? And it's still, I'm still talking still about doing that. it. Yeah. Right. So yeah. If you ever sound like a broken record, that's the problem. And I, you know, I have gotten myself to places where I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can't even stand to hear myself talk. Cause I'm complaining oh, yeah. about the same thing again. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say it anymore. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to be in that space. And yes. so that's where I think we have to stop and drop into 
are our actions and our words aligned? Because yes. if our words are saying one thing and our actions are going a different direction, you're never going to reach the goal you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And you lived, you and I have been friends through, you know, and I want to share personal information because I want people to know that, you know, we walk our talk too, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. I was in an on again, off again, super toxic situation for like 12 years, maybe even longer. Mm -hmm. And you were friends with me during it. And it got to the point where like, I'm sick of hearing myself talk about this, you know, because my friends could only reflect back and hold space for me for so long before they were like, girlfriend, Mm -hmm. you said the last time this cycle happened, you were out and now you're back in. So WTF is up, you know? And Mm -hmm. so I'm so grateful I had you and, and loving people as mirrors, but it does, it gets to that point, you know, and sometimes it just takes iterating through it, which there's similarities with businesses too, right? Where it's like, well, it still looks like I'm in this thing, but I'm doing it a little different and a little different and a little different. And then all of a sudden you're like, poof, something clicks. It's like the, um, Mm -hmm. you know, the gears just fall into alignment. And then it's like, oh, this isn't a thing anymore. I don't have to do this ever again. I'm on the other side. Yeah. That Either work. that or the, the universe gives you that kick in the pants out and <laughs> makes the decision for you. And it's like, I'm tired of hearing you talk. So yes, done. like <laughs> that's why people lose their jobs all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, I, I know um, for me, I stayed. And so that, that graphic design job I had, I stayed part-time for quite a few years after just kind of building part-time income, having that safety net. And I was so scared. Mm-hmm. And this is a pattern for me in my life. Like when it's time to leave, when it's time to finish something, I hold on for too long. Mm-hmm. And so I held on and held on and held on until my boss was like, we can't keep you on anymore. Sorry. Yeah. And I, it was time, but yeah. I was so scared to put in my notice and leave a second time because mm-hmm. I did it once. And he talked me into staying, which was great for me and for him. Um, but I was frustrated at the time that a couple of years later, I mean, I was ready to go. I was done, Yeah. but I wasn't willing to let go. And so circumstances happened and yeah. boom, I was out on my own and like trying to tread water. Cause I hadn't mm-hmm. fully prepared my words and my actions were saying two different things. My actions were not preparing me for full-time business right? where my words were saying, that's what I wanted. So when it happened, I floundered more than I should have because mm-hmm. I wasn't really ready, even though I kept saying I was. Well, that jump and that transition is a scary one. I mean, it I'm is. still mm-hmm. full-time employed and I've given myself a date, you know, in my mind where I want to get this all up and running. And I've given myself a lot of runway, but you know, the universe may have other plans for me. We'll see. I don't know what that looks mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just stepping into it and I have, I'm holding my intention and it feels good to finally be in action because I have talked about some of these things for a very long time. But the beauty of that too, and what I wanted to comment on what you said, like you held on to it for too long. I do also believe there is a divine right timing to things. And so while it yeah. felt like, cause, cause I think you and I are similar and it's like, we want to be there. Like we want to go from here to there now. Yesterday. And a lot of people <laughs> yeah. do, right. It's Everybody like, well, I want to do the thing. And, and we, it's like, you can't really skip steps and mm-hmm. there's different lessons for everyone to be learning throughout those things. Right. And so there's something that you got from holding on a little too long. And the next iteration of that, whenever that appears in your life in whatever way that appears, maybe you won't because you've now gained that valuable information of like, "Mm, I'm wasting time or I'm losing time or a perception of time or a perception of losing time, whatever. Um, Yeah. So I do also think there's a beautiful sort of dance, even when it doesn't feel lovely, Mm -hmm. it feels real Mm -hmm. crunchy sometimes Mm -hmm. um, and can be painful. Um, But yeah. Well, and so I love how this conversation keeps weaving back and forth from what we even started with to now, those, those cycles of the dark moments where we're in our shadow selves, we don't know what we're doing. We feel lost. We question ourselves, our, you know, critic, our inner critic is screaming so loud. We can't hear anything else. Those are the moments where we learn the most about ourselves. Mm -hmm. We want to be in the light moments (laughs) all the time. We want to be in the spaces where it feels easy and free all the time, but that's not actually where we learn. That's where we coast. And so these moments that bring out our shadow selves are an appealing away of another layer. And then like you were talking about putting it on the whiteboard and erasing it. That's where we cycle through again. So the next time 
we're in that shadow self, it's easier because we recognize it. We know it's here. We understand it. We can move through it faster. We can explore it without fear per se. There may be fear there, but we're not scared of it Mm -hmm. because we recognize that it's there. And then we can make progress further, faster, easier the next time around. Mm -hmm. I liken it a lot to levels in a video game because you're at this level and you have these cycles and iterations and you have these tools and this skill set. And it's like, oh, God, I just want to get to the next level, next level, and you get to the next level. And it's like you're a beginner, but you also have all of the stuff that you learned at the, the last level, right? So you're a beginner at this level. So you have new tools and you're, you've are you got the strengths that you built up here, but like it looks really different. The landscape is different. It's unfamiliar. You're like, where the F am I? Holy shit. Can I do this? Imposter syndrome, all the things, right? Mm-hmm. And then it gets real crunchy and it's like, ah, which is where I am again you know, I can feel that glass ceiling is there. And then mm-hmm. it's like, okay, it's crunchy like this. And it's, it's like, it feels like it's vibrating like this, right? Because I'm about to launch into that next level again. And then boom, I'm a beginner again in so yep. many ways. Yet now I have everything that I learned in these. It's Jumanji girl. We're just it all, is. we're just all in Jumanji. You know, I see this every day. I have a nine month old, right? And, and you know this, um, my daughter, I see this every day with her. She's learning so much right now. Like I watch her. She takes these, you know, we, we feed her puffs sometimes. And so I've watched her over the last month, take that little puff and it gets stuck right here in her hand. Like that little, (laughs) that little heel part in her hand, it's supposed to be in between her fingers. It gets stuck down here and she moves it to her mouth and it falls down onto her lap. Right. Cause she can't get it there. And I've watched her frustrated. Like it's supposed to be in my mouth. Like (laughs) that, 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 snack was supposed to go into my mouth. I don't understand. And then she plays with it and she works it and she works it. She works it. And now she can take those little puffs, like a little champ and put them in between her fingers and put them straight in her mouth. Cause mm. she gets it now mm-hmm. and crawling. And now we're working on walking, you know, like she is a rock star with figuring these things out. And it's really made me think back to beginner brain of like, think yes. about all the skills we have learned and mastered in our life all those tiny little things Mm -hmm. we've had to do to be functional adults today, much less entrepreneurs or in a career and the skills we've learned in those spaces. Mm -hmm. Think about all of the things that we have had to master to get to where we are. Mm -hmm. Accessing your intuition, creating a vision, stepping into a new career, starting a business. These are all things that you can do, but they take time they take practice. It was the same with rock climbing. I used to bring people climbing with me and they would expect to be great at it. Day one. And I, I, would, like, have pro- I would probably have been that. Yeah. I would have been so frustrated. Yeah. I'd be like, I'm out. I'll be over here waiting. Yes. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to take you rock climbing one time, one visit. Mm. I don't think we did it. No, I remember we went hiking um, here in Arizona when you came. We did do that. That was fun. I remember yeah. that. Mm-hmm. It was hot. It was, hot. <laughs> it was um, hot. but yeah, I, you know, all of these things take time. It takes energy. And I used to talk about this a lot. There's a, um, I've, I've deemed it the middleman syndrome. So when I used to climb and I used to teach people and bring them in, they would be like, I could never do what you do. You're so brave. I see you on those rocks. Like I could never do that. And I would look at them and be like, of course you can of course you can. If I could do it, like shy, introverted, always questioning myself, Katie Mm -hmm. could come out of my shell and learn how to scale the size of these mountains. You can do anything. And I would be like, you should see the people I climb with. They're crazy. Like the stuff they do is amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I would talk to them And I would hear the same thing coming back at me. No, you can totally do this. You should see so-and-so. They're crazy. And I realized no matter where we are in life, we are always in the middleman position. Mm -hmm. We are always in the space where somebody is above us doing more and somebody is theoretically below us trying to get to where we are, trying to learn. Mm -hmm. So our job is to always be helping that next person take the next step up. And then asking 
for what we need in order to step up ourselves. Totally. I just used that analogy in a conversation. Did you? Yeah. (laughs) yeah. The ladder, the ladder's coming through, right? Like it is that sort of, but then I also think like, is the ladder that way? Or is it like more, you know, I can get in the, which way is the ladder really? And why am I perceiving? I do love, I do love the way your mind works. (laughs) It's sometimes I'm like, why, what, but exactly. I just said exactly that. Like and to me, it feels like it's my responsibility to share, mm-hmm. you know, which is like, again, back to the intention of even doing this. It's like, I remember in those 04, 05 years where I was like looking for information and it was so all over the place. And now it's almost the opposite where there's like so much information and so many people and like who do, who's legit and who's not legit. And so I was like, I just want to be able to like open up a portal and like share information and wherever the those seeds land. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, however people get exposed to things that they can go on their own rabbit holes, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm so glad. I feel like we just like rounded it and <laughs> put a bow on it. We just got right back to where we needed to be. And I so appreciate you sharing all of your personal insights and your business insights. And the vision piece is so huge. And it's, I've been thinking nonstop about that. I even wrote, well, I'm wearing moons, which some, a little looks like an eye, but I wrote a little eye down on my notebook before we had this conversation. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I just can't wait to get into this. And so it was such a juicy conversation. (laughs) So maybe, and I'll put it in the show notes, but maybe also share where people can find you, where they can connect with you online. And we'll make sure we put all the links in the show notes and, and all that jazz. Yeah, great. So people can find me online at dailymomentum.com or on Instagram at momentum underscore coach. And uh, any other links to other places can be found there as well. I'll just put those two for now because of course we're all in a million places online at this point. Um, But I just, I always love our conversations, Kami. I think we always go to the coolest depths and uh, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me on. It was so fun. You're so welcome. And I wanted to also give you just a little space if you have um, a program or anything like that, that's like that you're wanting to share and put out there where beyond, obviously that we know your links, people can go to your links, but if there's anything that you want to also share or give a plug to now's the time girl. Yeah. So thank you. The big thing that I just launched that I said was like totally fear inducing, wanted to shut the whole thing down and run away. Um, But At the end of the day, I'm so excited about it. I needed to let the fear step in so that I could step through it. And like, it's been fascinating to watch it slowly dissolve as I have stepped in. Because when we up level, right, it's like requesting that we step up and step out confidently in all of ourselves. And sometimes that can feel really naked. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I'm super excited about this. This is a brand new way that I'm launching things. Um, It's a little bit of a result of having my daughter and just trying to streamline my time, but it's also at the request of so many of my clients who have asked for this. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's called the Daily Momentum Business Collective. And it's basically a think tank for my uber passionate entrepreneurs. You may be multi-passionate. You've probably been in business for like one to three years. You've hit the low hanging fruit or you're just beginning. So you've either just begun and you're looking for clients or you've hit that low hanging fruit of your peers, your friends, and now you're wondering, how do I grow? Yeah. And so this is an online collective space where we get together, we share ideas, you get personal coaching from me. And I have various levels of support available so that if you want one-on-one time versus group time, there is an option for you. Yeah, I love it. And I'm going to be hopping in because I want some more added accountability layers. Well, and it's because I'm, you know, I'm at that place where it's like, I've done the thing. Like I know how to Mm -hmm. do coaching and or whatever that looks like, creating content, creating programs and courses. I mean, hell, I've written courses for ASU and Grand Canyon University and Lindenwood and all the all the schools I've ever worked at, workshops, all the things, right? And so that was the other piece. Like over the years, I've been like, wait, I'm I'm doing this for all these other organizations. I can do this for myself, but it's different when you're creating curriculum that's already, you know, like here's yeah. the, you know, here's PR 300 reconstruct this and break it down in online learning platforms and all the things. It's different when it's your own processes because I had to kind of go down and then break down how I do what I do because sometimes I just do it. 
Yeah. Um, so that's been fun. But the whole like machine behind how all of these things come together and how do you monetize and all the systems and all mm-hmm. that stuff is new. And I just have such more of an admiration for you and all of the other people who have been diligently working. I mean, I've watched you put this work in year after year after year after year. Um, yeah. And I understand why more people either start and then stop or don't even start because it is so much work because you're also at the beginning initially are like head marketer and (laughs) systems analyst and customer service and, you know, all of the things. And there are so many moving parts and pieces and, and the marketplace is so saturated and, you know, depending on what your niche might be in these types of fields. So I'm excited to hop into the collective because it's going to help me refine Inner space camp, the multiple iterations of that, whatever that ends up looking like down the road. But how do I then, you know, continue with the podcast? And I have art products that I want to put out. And like, how do all these multi passionate pieces fit together? Yeah. So I'm excited to I get in there it. and get the boost from that. Um, I'm and yeah. so excited that you're joining me. I mean, being an entrepreneur feels so personal sometimes. And yes, you can do these things for other people, but entrepreneurs yeah. always tell me always, 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 Oh my gosh, I did this for other people. I've done this all yes. these years but now that I'm doing it. Yeah. It's a totally different ball game. And you learn, you will learn the depths of your wisdom. You will learn the depths of what you have to share. Mm-hmm. And then I'm really excited because we just started putting into play. And again, this was by request from my members, which I just love them. Um, we are putting in implementation days. So we're having guest experts and we're having implementation workshops so that you're actually going to do the thing. We're yes. aligning words and action, which I yeah. think is so magical that. in this space. Well, and what I love about that too is one more point to being a newbie on the business side of it, like the execution of the business is the group and meeting other people who are in different yeah. iterations of their own businesses and having that support, but also just being able to hear like other people have gone through these things. And there's just something about having a community that mm-hmm. I'm excited about as well, because, you know, uh, we're on the zooms all the time and not everyone is like networking out and connecting. And even in, even in your local town, you may not connect. There may not be like-minded or similar types of businesses or whatever, you know, you just want to, you want to vibe with the people Um, that are in alignment with where you're at. And so I'm excited to also have that piece of it. So just, just chipping away at these little pieces as I go along and I'm ready for this next step. So excited. I'm so excited to have you and I can't wait to see where all this goes. And I love the inner space practices you're creating. Yeah. I, you know, so, um, I'm excited to flesh those out in this program, but also then how I'm going to break it down into more digestible pieces for other people in other ways. And, um, there's a couple of, um, conferences even that are looking for types like because it kind of falls in line with self-care too and I'm like oh yeah. I could go do this as a you know as a one-hour presentation at a thing and then that leads to all the things so I'm always the the brain is always spinning I love it yeah. I love it well thank you for sharing so much oh my gosh look we're right at the time look at that just synced <laughs> up <Perfect>. exactly <laughs> <laughs> thanks for for spending time and sharing your magic with me I love you so much and um, I love you can't wait to share this out with the world good thank you so much thanks, I love Katie. you too okay <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this juicy conversation with Katie Mattson Craig and that you gained some insights about your own vision for your life career or business as she mentioned in the episode katie recently launched the daily momentum business collective a think tank for entrepreneurs and multi-passionate preneurs who are seeking a group to collaborate with and help them grow their businesses online in the collective space so everyone can share ideas and gain various levels of support including one-on-one and group coaching from katie Be sure to check out all of Katie's programs at dailymomentum.com or follow along on Instagram. She is momentum underscore coach over on Instagram. And just a reminder that if you do want to dive deeper into clarifying your inner space best practices to please hop on over to kamik.com because Cosmic's Inner Space Camp registration is now open. You can find it at kamik.com slash inner space dash camp. Head on over and sign up if this is something that you need more support with. 
And if you enjoyed this episode of the Cosmics Inner Space podcast, please leave a review on Apple Podcasts or share this episode with a friend. I want to stay more connected with you. So please be sure to follow me on Instagram at KamiKDOTCOM, where I share a whole lot more Cosmics vibes on Insta Stories. And I am also at KamiKDOTCOM on Facebook. And of course, we can always stay connected via the Cosmics Inner Space Mothership over on the blog at KamiK.com. 